So love it or hate it, Gutenberg for WordPress is pretty much upon us and is going to be the main part of working with WordPress moving forward. So in this video, I just wanna show you how you can start to integrate some additional blocks, some free blocks that open up and extend what you can do with Gutenberg itself. My name is Paul C and this is WP Touch, the channel where we create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to become part of the notification squad. Okay, so Gutenberg. I've already given you my first impressions on it, and as I've said before, we have no real choice moving forward. This is going to become the de facto editor for WordPress when version 5 ships very soon. And as you know, there are already some blocks included, and blocks are basically the building block elements that make up a post or page using Gutenberg. Well, there are some free options available that expand that and give us a lot more controls. And in this video, I just wanna demonstrate some of the top ones that are currently available. So you can get an idea of the kinds of things you could use Gutenberg for moving forward and how you can use these blocks to speed up the process of building your websites and web pages. So once you start working with Gutenberg in WordPress, you can't help but realize that everything is basically built out of building blocks. And this video, I'm not gonna go over how you use those building blocks inside Gutenberg itself. I've already taken a look at that in the first look video, and I will cover it in more detail in a future video, but what I want to show you is how you can expand upon these default or these basic elements that you have. So if we take a look in the top left-hand corner and click to expand, you can see there's all the building blocks that ship with Gutenberg straight out of the box. Nothing has been added to this. This is just exactly what you get with a clean install. So you can see things like common blocks, you've got paragraphs, images, headings, and so on and so forth. So that's all well and good. And they're okay. To give you an example, if you want to create something a little bit more complex, like this at the moment is just creating a simple post. Let's just say you want to create a page that actually displays all those posts. You'll very quickly see that there's not really much in the way of control here. So let's just come into the pages section and create a new page. And this page just can simply have one simple job. It's going to display the posts that we've got created. So if we come to the blocks in the top left-hand corner, we can come in there and you can see we've got an option for latest posts. So we click on there. You can see this drops in a very, very simplistic looking list. We can change some basic parameters on there. We can go to a grid view, which will show us a grid of the number of posts we set up on there. We can go through, we can specify then how we align different elements, the center, to the top, to the bottom, to the right, all those kinds of things. But it's very, very limited. Even if you take a look on the right-hand side where all the options are, you can see we don't have much control. We can do things like set the number of columns, and we can specify whether we want to show the date or something, but it doesn't really show any kind of visual interest. There's nothing to show the featured image or anything else. But with these free blocks, you can start to expand on that and get something just a little bit more akin to working with a page builder that you might be used to, something like Elementor. So let's just jump out of this now and go to our plugin section and we click on Add New. Now we're gonna install these blocks in the same way you'd install any other kind of plugin. You can upload them or you can find them on the WordPress repository and lots of other places. So let's just click and we're gonna go through, first of all, we're gonna use Atomic Blocks. You can see there's our Atomic Blocks. So all we need to do is click on Install Now. If you want to check out more details, we can click on there and we can take a look at all the different blocks that are available. So you can see we have quite a few different options. Got a couple of screenshots so we can see the kinds of thing we're going to get. And as you can see straight away, they already look a lot more interesting, a lot more useful than that which ships with Gutenberg itself. So let's just say we'd install that now. We'll let that download and install. And once that's downloaded and installed, we can activate it and we'll then have those new blocks available to us inside the Gutenberg editor. So let's click on Activate. That'll activate that for us, and then we can just jump over and start taking a look at how we can start creating these. Now, one of the nice things you get with this Atomic Blocks is it gives you a nice introduction, shows you some information about how you use it, what are blocks, all those kinds of things, which is a nice way, a nice introduction if you are new to this. You can also go download a free theme. Now, I'm using the Ocean WP theme for this example, but you can use any theme that will support the blocks. And something that will be nice to see in the future is that they actually released the 2019 theme that fully supports Gutenberg and the blocks. But at this point in time, we don't have that. So it would be nice to see that in the future. So as you can see, there's some nice information on here. It'll tell us what Gutenberg is and so on. And we've got some tutorials and things. We're going to leave all that. But obviously, if you want to take a look at it, take the time to have a little look through. So let's come back to our pages now. We control all pages. There's the page we started working with. So let's just come back in and continue editing that. 
Okay, so let's just remove anything that's on the page. Let's get rid of these elements. So we'll remove that block from there. Okay, so we're ready now to start adding our blocks in. So if we come into the top left-hand corner again, and we scroll through, we'll now see we've got atomic blocks listed at the bottom. And if we expand that out, you can see we've got what might appear at first to be some of the same things that you've got as part of Gutenberg itself, but these are a lot more feature-rich. So let's take a look at how we can use some of these. Let's just say we'll take the post grid this time. So we'll click on there, and you can see immediately looks considerably better. If we just jump over to the right-hand side, you can see we've got all the options for this particular block. It already looks a lot more like the, either the customizer inside WordPress itself with various themes, or if you're using a page builder, it gives you a lot more control. Is it anywhere near as good as those? Not yet. Maybe it'll mature into something like that, but at least we've got more control and more options available by using these atomic blocks. So you can see we've got a number of items. We can reduce this down. We can edit it with what we want. So we can do things like adjust the column numbers on there alongside setting up the featured image style, whether we want to display this or not. We can enable or disable it. We can come through and choose the post author, post dates, and so on. So you can see immediately is much more useful. We can change the layout if we want to on here very easily. We can adjust the position of various different items so we can get something a little bit more unique. So that's already a much improved start over the initial Gutenberg options. But what other tools do we have? What other blocks do we have available? Let's just scroll on the page and let's add some new ones in. Let's come down and click. And again, we'll come down to the atomic block so we can go through there. And let's just say, for example, we want to use something like the AB accordion. We can click on there and you can see that now drops in an accordion for us. So we can now start going in and making edits and changes to that. You can see you can adjust the font size, open by default. If we jump to advanced, we've got additional CSS classes. So if we want to target these specifically, we can do that. So that's another one of the options that are available. So let's just remove that a second. Come back in and we'll come down again to our accordion blocks. And you can see as we go through these different things and we start to open them up, you can see what happens is it pushes them to the top of that list, which immediately makes it quicker and easier for us to find those again and again. How about an AB notice? Well, you can see we can come in and we can just insert a notice. We can adjust all the colors on there. We can specify that it's always being shown or it's dismissible. So if you do that, we can have it pop up at the top or somewhere on our page, then dismiss it when we want to. Change the color on there, no problem at all. Easily do that. Come in and start typing in whatever we want. All very, very cool. So you can see that by using these atomic blocks, we've got a lot more options available. But what other ones do we have on top of atomic blocks? Are there any other ones available? Well, there are quite a few. I'm going to show you one or two more options, just so you can get a taste for the kinds of things that are available currently. Like I say, these are all free options, so you don't have to pay anything more for this if you decide to use Gutenberg. It just opens up your flexibility. So just hop back over now to the plugin section. What we're going to do is we're going to search for another set of blocks that is stackable. The ultimate Gutenberg blocks, well, that's open to be seen, I suppose. But let's again, let's go through and install those now and see what tools they bring. Okay, so that's downloaded. Let's just activate it. And once we've activated it, we'll jump back over into our page and we can start seeing what we're doing. Now, unlike Atomic Blocks, we don't get that nice introduction welcome. We just basically get an opt-in to important updates and so on. So we can skip that if we want to. And we'll just jump back in and start working. So we'll come back to our pages and we'll go back into our sample block set. We'll just come in and start editing with this. So in the same vein as we have with the atomic blocks, let's just get rid of some of these. Let's just remove those from here. And once we've done that, we'll come back up to the top left-hand corner. And if we scroll down, you can see we've got stackable in the same way as we had atomic blocks. So we've got very similar kind of options. There are a few more options in here, but you can see it's all done in very much the same kind of way. So you can use these in conjunction with the, each other. No problem with that at all. So let's just say you want to put a team member in there. Well, we can click and add that in, and it drops in our basic overview information. If we want to add an image in there, we can do that. So let's just choose this image. We'll select that. We can edit any of these elements, and any options are available on the right-hand side again. So you can see the image shape. We can adjust that. We want to put it into one, two, or three, four, three columns, any color settings, so we can easily come in and start tweaking the colors of any of the different items that make up this particular block. And again, if we come to the advanced section, you can see the option for advanced uh, so additional CSS classes. So it's all very, very straightforward. And like I say, if you are used to page builders or the customizer in WordPress, it's very much the same kind of thing. So we've seen how to download these block libraries and how to use them. But what if you don't want an entire library? You just want a specific block. Well, we've got an option for that as well. 
you can easily use the Gutenberg block library, which is a free resource that allows you to get access to these particular different blocks that you want. So you can see if you come to the link that's in the description below, which is the editor blocks, wp.com slash library, you can see we've got a range of different blocks that we can simply come in and download the ones we want. So for example, if we wanted to use WP Forms and we wanted to have the access to the contact form block, well, we can come in, we can click to learn more information about it, and then we can see about how we download and install it. So you can see there's the download option, download it, upload it in the normal fashion you'd have inside WordPress, inside the plugin section, and then you'll have access for this particular block. So this is a great way of making sure you don't download and install things that you don't actually need. You can just grab the things that you want. And again, like I said, this is a completely free resource. So take a look on there and see what kinds of things you need and then you can access them download them and add them to your particular copy of Gutenberg so there we go a selection of blocks that you can integrate into Gutenberg from the get-go speaking of Gutenberg what do you think of it do you think it's a good innovation and a good step forward to keep in line with the things like the Wix editor and a lot of these other page builders that are included with online website building services or do you think it's something that's being forced upon us and the reality is they should have left it to other people to develop a much better solution like Elementor, Brizzy or any of those page builders? I'd love to get your feedback in the comments section below. Let me know what you think. Let's get a conversation started. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments section why you didn't enjoy the video so I can make sure moving forward to create better content for you. As always, my name is Ian Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, Take care.